Okay, so the next question, or the next part of question two is um, to find the occurrence of these patterns, or to see if those patterns exist in that text, and to show that what branch, uh, what branch represents that pattern. So our first pattern that we want to know if it exist, exists in this text is AG. If we look on our tree, since the first letter is A, then we would check for the branch that starts with A, and the next letter is G. And as soon as you find your pattern, you stop. If this was, if you were programming and this was a loop, and you said, you know, for length of p, which is two, um, you, it would have stopped, and then you would say something like, if if found, then go to leaves below this pattern. So in this case, um, a g exists in two places, in six, at index six, and at index two. So the branches help to exclude certain patterns when patterns get longer. If we were searching for A, G, T instead, then you would run your A through, here's an A, then you compare it to your next letter, a G, and then your next letter is T, so you check your forks and say, does either of these start with a T? Yeah, this one does. And as soon as you found your pattern, you stop and you go um, to all the leaves below it. In that case, it would be two. And up here, that makes sense. Um, a, G occurs here, and it occurs here. It occurs at 2 and occurs at 6, and we have those represented here. AGT only exists at 2. So your pattern for AG does exist on these um, branches. And here is your pattern as it's shown. The next one, TA, we would first go to T, the T branch, and then check the next nucleotides in that string. And you have TA, so T, and you go to the next one, that's not A. You don't backtrack, you don't have to do that because you know that this is the only place where T starts. So if it's not there, you don't have to look any further. That's a nice as aspect of the suffix tree. And it's the same for these also. That was my error, because I had changed this T after making the patterns, and I didn't go back and change the patterns. But so the other two do not exist in this, in this tree, and they don't exist, therefore, in the text. So that's uh, that part. And then, I asked the question, can a leaf represent more than one pattern? The answer is yes. And we see that here. Well, you see that two leaves can represent one pattern. That asks, can a leaf represent more than one pattern? What pattern, say, does this, can this leaf represent? Or let's even pick a different one. What patterns can this leaf represent? Well, if you had the pattern C, you'd stop, you'd go to both of these. So one can represent the pattern C. And then if you had CA, you would stop, because you found it, and you'd go to the leaves. So it could also represent CA. And then it could also represent CAG. And what else can it represent? C, A, G, T. If you, and you would stop because you found your pattern. pattern. So C, A, 
G, T. So clearly, a leaf can represent more than one pattern. But how many was the second part of that question. How many indeed? Um, let's look at this one. This is index one. So what can it represent? It could represent everything that starts at index one. So it can represent this. It can represent CA, CAG. It represents everything that starts with that index. Say here seven. This can represent G or it can represent GG. It's so everything that starts at seven. G, GG. If your length of T was M and your index, say your index here is 7, so this, is, this is your index, and here our, our M is 8, then your possible, how many, how many patterns can that represent would be M plus 1 minus I. So um, it represents the amount that's in T plus 1 and then you subtract the index that you're at. We can test that. Let's say at pattern three, I mean at index three, we should have one pattern. Actually, let me do a different color. At, at index three, we have, one, we have one pattern, two pattern, three pattern, four pattern, five pattern, six patterns. So that would be um, our M is eight plus one, minus our index of three. Nine minus three equals six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the answer to how many patterns can a leaf represent, it's this when I represents the index at that leaf and M represents the length of your text. The final question was why, a su why use a suffix tree instead of a keyword tree? And of course uh, since they both give us the answer that we need, it would be speed. The suffix tree has a better big O than the keyword tree. The keyword tree, to create it, so you, you create, when you create a keyword tree, it's the length of every keyword. You have to include every keyword in your keyword tree. So the big O to create the keyword tree is big O of n, when n equals the length of all patterns of your, uh, so all your, when I say, I'm kind of using keywords and patterns interchangeably, that word. So um, here, if we were to create a tree, keyword tree, it would take two, two, one, two, three, four, five, three. So it would be 12, um, n would be 12. That's a ridiculously small keyword tree, but just so you get the idea. So that was to create the keyword tree. And then to search the keyword tree, you have to pass the pattern, I mean the text, through your keyword tree to see if you find it. So if the pattern is at the end of your text, then you've had to check every single branch in 
basically, um, till you finally met that, that pattern within your text. So to uh, search for a pattern within the text, you run your text through the keyword tree, and that's going to take n times m. m being the length of your, pa uh, your text, and n being the length of that, the keyword. Whereas your suffix tree, to create your suffix tree, uh, you create it in um, O to the M. So that's the length of your text. But to search it, it's a lot faster because your keyword is short or your pattern is short, and that's what you're passing through. You don't, you're not passing through your whole text over the keywords. So it's only going to be as long as as long as your the length of your pattern that you're running through it. So this time, it's only m plus n. This is when you use like this type of technique to build it. So it's the length of the pattern plus the length to build and then to search. And then this is to build and to search. So n plus n m, that's quadratic. And this one is basically linear, which is faster. So that's why you would use the suffix tree instead of the keyword tree.